Hey everyone, well I did it. I finally got a vacuum chamber that can fit a human. Devossi sent me this giant vacuum chamber. They even put my Action Lab logo on it. It's so cool. It was a beast to get into my lab though. <laughs> it is giant. Holy cow, it came in a 630 pound crate. So there are a lot of things I wanna test in this, but let's start off with one of my favorites that I haven't been able to test yet. Can rockets really fly in space? Let's see if we can build a rocket that can fly in the vacuum chamber. So in order to do this, first we need some fuel that can burn in a vacuum. But what do we need to get this fuel? Money. Whoa. <laughs> you might have guessed that wasn't real money. But what it actually was made of is nitrocellulose, or flash paper. So flash paper like this is made by mixing nitric acid with cellulose, and it makes this extremely flammable paper. <laughs> Magicians frequently use this because it can go up in flames, and there's no residue left over. You don't see any ashes, and it goes up really fast. <laughs> it's really bright, too. But one of the coolest things about flash paper is that it doesn't need oxygen to burn. It can burn without oxygen because there's enough oxygen within the molecule itself. So first let's test if it really does ignite in a vacuum. Let's pump this down as low as it can go. Okay, it's going down. Rockets have been amazing technology that allow us to get around in space. But you know what works even better than rockets is warp drives. So thanks to Star Trek Fleet Command for sponsoring this video. Star Trek Fleet Command is a free to play open world game. The graphics in this game are amazing and really bring the virtual world to life. And what's even better is that it's free to play, which makes it accessible to anyone. As a star-based commander on the edge of civilized space, you recruit iconic characters from the next generation, the original series, the J.J. Abrams films, Discovery, and more, including Kirk, Spock, Michael Burnham, Data, and Geordi. You can even build powerful ships, including the USS Enterprise, the Romulan Warbird, and the Klingon Bird of Prey. So you can play epic battles with players all over the world. You can join millions of players forge alliances, defeat your enemies, and conquer territories. Even choose your own faction and explore new worlds on intergalactic missions. And also you get to play in the Kelvin timeline, so it breathes new life into the Star Trek universe. You can download Star Trek Fleet Command using the link in my description. Once you're in the game, go to Player Profile, Open Settings, and choose General. And then scroll down to the very end to sign up for your Scopely account. Then go to the official website, StarTrekFleetCommand.com, and click the store icon on the header to log in with your Scopely account to visit the web store. Once you're in the store, access promo codes on the left hand of the menu. You can open the promo codes page and lastly enter that code. Once your rewards are successfully redeemed, you'll be able to see them when you go back to your game. So download the game today and immerse yourself in the Star Trek universe and join the in-game contest experiences and giveaways to help you become a leader or member of a mind Alliance. Now let's get back to our experiment and test our rockets. So this is at about 0.02 atmospheres absolute pressure right now. The reason I'm using the dollar bill printed flash paper is because I'm going to be igniting it with my laser. So I need some black pigment that will absorb the light a little bit better and it'll get hot enough. So let's shine our laser on it. And look at that, it still burns. There's no visible flame, though it just kind of disappears into a gas. That's so cool. What's cool with this big of a volume is that the pressure in the chamber actually doesn't change by any measurable amount after it burns. This is because the volume of the gas released is so small compared to the volume of the total chamber. So you can see we're still at low pressure, negative 827 millibar, which is relative to my atmospheric pressure, which is 846 millibar. So the total pressure in the chamber is only around 0.02 atmospheres, which is the same pressure we started with before we burned the paper. This is good because it means we won't increase the pressure in the vacuum chamber from the rocket gases alone. Okay, now that we know it'll ignite in a vacuum, let's make our rocket. To do this, I need something transparent that I can shine my laser through. So let's use a syringe. I'm just gonna put the flash paper inside the syringe and then glue the plunger so it can't come out, so the pressure can build up. Okay, got it hanging in there. Completely suspended. So after it's glued, the only way the gas can come out is through the tip of the syringe. Once the gas starts pouring out, it should send the syringe flying in the opposite direction. Now let's try to ignite it by just holding our laser in one spot.
Whoa. <laughs> Holy cow, that generated a lot of force. Once the rocket took off, it smashed into the wall just into a million pieces. That's so cool. So let's try a little bit bigger syringe and see if we can do it without destroying the rocket this time. Hey, it worked. Look how cool that looks. You can see the stream of smoke particles shooting out of the rocket like a laser beam. Since there's very little air in the chamber, there's nothing for the stream of gas to bump into, so it has a very straight flow with little turbulence. So if we were at this pressure in the sky, we wouldn't be able to use a traditional jet Whoa. engine to provide thrust. We would have to use a <laughs> rocket. Rockets not only work in a vacuum, but they actually work better in a vacuum than at atmospheric pressure. The propulsion in a rocket comes from the fact that you're expelling gas out the nozzle of the rocket at high speeds. In order to conserve momentum, that means that there has to be an equal and opposite force on the rocket in the opposite direction. This is similar to how a strong hose pushes you backwards due to the water being forced out of the nozzle. This is happening with rockets, except that it's gases moving at ultrasonic speeds being shot out the nozzle. So my giant vacuum chamber worked perfect for testing out how rockets can fly in space. So now I want to open it up to you. What else should I use my giant vacuum chamber for? And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you learned something and we'll see you next time.